Normally, people ask me questions about navigation, but today I've got a question for you. <laughs> what is the difference between an azimuth and a bearing? I'll give you a clue. If I follow an azimuth of 160 from here, I'll go in this direction. If I follow a bearing of 160, I'll go in this direction. I have to say that most people will use the words bearing and azimuth to mean exactly the same thing, which is fine. As long as everybody in your group understands the direction they're supposed to be traveling, it doesn't really matter what you call it. I've always said that it doesn't matter what system you're using, as long as you and everybody else in your group can use that system to navigate safely. I was asked this same question about azimuths and bearings a few weeks ago by one of the participants on a navigation course that I was running. I told them the answer and the next morning they turned up with lots of printed screenshots shots from various websites, all of which gave a different answer to the one that I'd given. They all gave the same answer and they all gave the wrong answer. So that evening I went home and I checked on a few uh, well-known large websites to see what was going on. Chat GPT said, azimuth is the angle measured clockwise from a fixed reference point such as north and bearing is the angle measured clockwise from the observer's position to a target point. Okay, and I mean, that is obviously rubbish because azimuths aren't taken from reference points and a bearing can be taken from anywhere to anywhere else. <laughs> so much for AI. So the next one I had, next website I looked at was Wikipedia. And it said, in navigation, bearing or azimuth is the horizontal angle between the direction of an object and north or another object. Now, that's a little bit better, but it's still wrong. <laughs> that's the problem. It's still saying that bearing and azimuth are the same thing. Now, I think this is where a lot of the problems occur. When people are writing websites, they will cross-reference the information that they put on those websites with supposedly knowledgeable sources like Wikipedia, like reference books. But the problem has come is when people like Wikipedia and reference books are giving the wrong information. It means that all the other websites eventually just regurgitate that incorrect information. So if you can't look on the internet to find an answer to a question, how are people supposed to ever find out the answer? What is the difference between an azimuth and bearing? I have to say here that I'm not going to use the military system of azimuths and bearings because I'm only interested in civilians who go walking in the hills and the mountains. There's nothing wrong with the military system, it's very simple and it obviously works for them with their, how can I put it, their very specific requirements. The military divide a compass into north and south regions and they use these to define bearings. A bearing in a military sense, as an example from somewhere to somewhere else, let's call it point X and point Y. So in this case, if we were to travel, if we were to go from Y to X, it would be north 46 east. So from the north, you rotate 46 degrees towards the east. From X to Y, that would be south 46 west, because from the south, you rotate 46 degrees towards the west. In the civilian world, we don't divide the compass into two halves. We just use the whole circle of 360 degrees and use the angle from north to the direction of whatever it is we're looking at or the direction that we want to travel. So in this case, if we were to go from X to Y, that would be 226 degrees. So from the north, you rotate 226 degrees. If we wanted to go from Y to X, then it would be 46 degrees, because from the north, you're rotating 46 degrees. So we always rotate from the north, whereas the military can rotate from the north or the south. So if a bearing is the amount of clockwise rotation around a circle starting from the north and expressed in degrees, what is an azimuth? <laughs> For this, I'm going to need an extremely precisely calibrated piece of equipment. And the only thing I've got out here, is, well, I've got this wall, that'll do. So I'm going to use this wall to, ex to explain an azimuth. So let's just get straight to the center of this. An azimuth is simply an angle 
taken in a clockwise rotation from a meridian. Now, a meridian means different things to different people. To an astronomer, it means something. To a geologist, it means someone else, something else. To us, a meridian is simply a line. It's a line that goes from somewhere to somewhere else. A good example, our wall. That is a meridian. That's our meridian for today. Now, it, it doesn't really matter what direction your meridian, or in our case, the wall, is pointing. It's still, this is our meridian. One end of it is zero, and the other end of it is 180. I'll drop this onto your screen, just make it hopefully a little bit clearer. Let's say that we have a line from here to here. So one end of the line is zero, and the other end of the line is 180 on our compass. If the line moves, so does the zero and the 180. So we can say, from the wall, take an azimuth of 65 degrees and you'll get to your next location. Whichever way the wall is running, from there you take an azimuth of 65 degrees, which don't forget is a rotational angle starting at zero, and zero being one end of the wall or the meridian. So all you do, go to the wall, turn at 65 on your, on your compass and set off. Now, when out walking, it doesn't, a, a meridian doesn't need to be a wall. It could be anything. It could be the edge of a forest. It could be, you know, a, a river or a canal or even a track through a forest. Azimuths are really useful, as an example, in a forest where there's parallel tracks. You can say, from the first track, walk on an azimuth of three, four, five, and you'll get to the next track. And then walk on an azimuth of zero, and that will take you out of the forest. Obviously, this can cause problems. Let's say you're told to walk on an azimuth of 35 degrees from a river. Most rivers aren't perfectly straight, so you could end up going in a completely different direction depending on which section of the river you set off from. Don't forget that an azimuth meridian can be a line in any direction, but obviously this isn't any use if you're walking around the hills and the mountains when you want to end up in a specific place. As a prime example, you're walking down this wall and you walk on an azimuth of 3, 4, 5 from the wall, you don't know where you're going to end up because you don't know where you left the wall. You don't know whereabouts specifically you are on the wall. And it's for this reason and this reason alone that most people, when they're using an azimuth, instead of a meridian that goes off in different directions, they use the north-south line on a compass or on a map as their meridian. Have you got it? So, in other words, zero on their meridian is north and 180 is south. And so the rotation, the rotational angle, is the same with an azimuth if you use that north-south meridian as it would be if you used a bearing, a compass bearing. And it's for this reason that people get the, the two confused, azimuth and bearing. And it's also probably the reason that most websites get it totally wrong. But anyway, hopefully you now know the difference between an azimuth and a bearing. So thanks for watching.